Despite poverty and discrimination, they've made it into the only state-funded university in the Republic of Congo. But even here, students from the country's pygmy communities face obstacles. Karine is studying law and campaigns for pygmy students like herself. You can find everyone here. You don't know their ethnic backgrounds. But as soon as you say who you are, they say, ah, you're a pygmy. At that moment, people look at us, people who liked us, and they change. They don't see you in the same way anymore. Because here in the Congo, pygmies are considered subhuman. According to anthropologists, pygmies measure around one and a half meters in height. They represent around 1% of the Congolese population, where they're called autochtones, meaning indigenous people. Yet despite being the first inhabitants of the region, there's little understanding for their way of life. They have their specific and strange culture. They carve teeth, they eat strange things like insects and some plants we don't eat here in the city. So their knowledge of nature is a bit frightening. Against this backdrop of discrimination, Congo's government says it's trying to integrate pygmy people into society. Today we're putting an emphasis on health, on education as well. There are many schools that have been created by logging companies by NGOs and by the state as well, which is to raise the educational level of pygmies. And then that way they will have more representatives to speak up for them in decision-making processes. But government policies are unlikely to change attitudes. That falls to Congo's new generation of pygmies challenging misconceptions to make it in mainstream society.